when solving these trigonometric equations, what makes, hey, record, come on, silly. Uh, what makes this different than the ones we looked at before? The two-thirds theta. Yes, very good. Just making sure it's on. Two-thirds theta. We got a number in front of the theta. That's the problem, okay? That's the problem. So we solve it normally, as in we subtract the two. And we get four sine of two-thirds theta is equal to negative dos, which is Spanish for two. And then we divide by four. And we get sine of two-thirds theta is equal to negative one-half. Okay. So don't freak out about this, but we're going to pause for a minute so you can see and understand what's going on. Like if I had the square root of the two-thirds x is equal to negative one-half, we'll just change it. If I had that, would I multiply both sides by three halves right now? No, what do you have to get rid of first? The square root, right? And how do you get rid of a square root? You square it, right? So in this situation, the question is, well, if I've got sine of two-thirds theta is equal to negative one-half, the question is, if I want to get at that theta, I can't multiply by three halves right now, just like I couldn't there. Here, the square root had to move. What has to move here? Sine. Now, we don't actually write it out all the time. But I want you to understand the mathematics of what we're doing. The reason why multiplying by three halves eventually will work is because three halves and two-thirds, those are inverses, right? Under multiplication, those are inverses. They go away. What's the inverse of sine? Cosecant is the reciprocal. What is the inverse? Sine inverse. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Right? Like, that's the thing that undoes that. So we, we do that to both sides. Okay? And, and we've already been doing this. I just want you to understand how it works out now that you have the two-thirds. So that whole, like, sine inverse and sine thing, that now disappears. And I have two-thirds theta is equal to the sine inverse of negative one-half. Well, how do we do that? Well, we just set up our quadrants. Where is sine negative? Third and fourth. You guys are so smart. And, uh, and then if I inverse one-half for sine, you memorize this one by now, right? So the three ends in zero. 30. Very good. So we got 30. So what are my two angles? 210 and 330. So 210 is going to be 1, and then 2 thirds theta equals 330 is going to be equal to another. Got it? Now, the directions say to solve for theta between 0 and 360. When I say that, what I mean is when you set up your initial quadrants, come up with values between 0 and 360, okay? Because our final answers might not actually be between 0 and 360. Let's see what happens. How do I get rid of the 2 thirds? Multiply by 3 halves. I get theta is equal to, let's see, 210 divided by 2, that's 105. 105 times 3 is 315. I had a really good arithmetic teacher. And then uh, this thing, I do the same thing. I multiply by three halves. I get theta is equal to, oh boy, it's like 990 divided by two, like 495. So 495 is not between zero and 360, is it? I don't want you to exclude that from the solution set. If we had more time, we'd talk about doing things like that. But the fact is, let's just say that when you set up your initial uh, quadrants, make sure that those angles are between 0 and 360, then just, you know, whatever you get, you get. We good with that? Okay. Any questions there?
So you see the little bit of challenge that uh, happens there. Um, how do you what do you think you do for number two? Don't worry about the three theta. Think about this kind of like uh, what we were doing on Monday. Excellent. Two cosine squared of three theta minus cosine of three theta is equal to seto. So again, this is like two x squared minus x is equal to zero. That that's what this equation is like. In order to solve that, you would Factor out an x, so in this situation you're going to factor out a cosine of 3 theta. So cosine of 3 theta times, let's see, that's going to be 2 cosine of 3 theta minus 1. So I've got two equations now. Cosine of three theta. Cosine of three theta is zero. And two cosine of three theta minus one is zero. How do I get rid of the cosine? Cosine inverse, so you'd be left with 3 theta is equal to, where is cosine equal to 0? Think about the unit circle. Is cosine x or y? So where is the x value equal to 0? 90 and 270. Yes? See that? What? What? Yeah, look at it in your brain. Yep. So I'm just trying to think of this. Like, again, you know, remember when we first started doing the unit circle and I told you that you would, like, make these points? And, like, you're like, yeah, I know what those points are, Mr. Gantz. Like, let's go on to more difficult stuff. How many times do we refer back to this? It's all the time, isn't it? And, and so all I'm just asking is say cosine is the x value. Where is x zero? 90 and 270. Now she got it. Thank you for asking the question. That means that 75% of the class was confused as well. So thank you. Good job. All right. So 3 theta is equal to 90. And 3 theta is equal to 270. So now what do I do? Divide by 3. So theta is equal to 30 degrees on 90 degrees. And then what about that? Yep, add 1, divide by 2. Cosine inverse. Cosine equal to 1 half. Let's see, that's the x value equal to 1 half. That would probably be there. What spot is that? 60. And then probably right there, x would be one half as well, right? I, I'm seeing a few faces. They're like, I can't do that in my brain. Cosine is positive in both the first and the fourth. I take out my calculator, turn it on, I cosine inverse. 0.5 and I get 60. So this is what I was trying to visualize. You can see we got 60 and then we've got 300. So 3 theta is 60 and 3 theta is 300. Divide by 3 and we get theta is 20 and theta is 100. Ooh, would you be ready for one like that on the test? Would it kick your butt? 
So this is what used to be incorporated as well onto the last test you took. And uh, so it made it a little bit more challenging. So we cut it, cut the sections up a little bit. Let's do an easier problem. You ready for an easier problem? This is an easier problem. But it looks challenging because we got both a cosine and a sine. What's the relationship between sine and cosine? Tangent. The equation is tangent is equal to sine divided by a cosine. Man, you guys are smart. So I get the negative root of 3 is equal to tangent of x. And yes, some of you guys already know where tangent is equal to the root of 3. But we'll set up our quadrants. Where is tangent negative? Second and fourth. Take out my calculator. I tangent inverse. The root of 3, and I get 60. So what is my angle in the second quadrant? 120. And my angle in the fourth quadrant, 300. That's not too bad. Sine and cosine, the relationship is tangent. What's the relationship between sine and cosecant? They're reciprocals, right? Yeah. So let's say I try the same thing. Let's say I try that dividing thing, okay? Let's say I divide both sides by cosecant of x over 2. Divide by cosecant of x over 2. What's cosecant of x over 2 divided by cosecant of x over 2? 1. And then sine divided by cosecant. Sine of x over 1 divided by, and then cosecant is 1 over sine, right? 1 over sine of x. If you divide those, do they cancel? No, you get sine squared. So we get 2 sine squared of x over 2. And that's our new equation. What are we going to do to solve that? Divide by 2. Now what are we going to do? We're definitely going to square root it. Square root of 1 half. You don't have to simplify, but do you see that that's the root of 2 over 2? Does that look familiar to you? What kind of angles do we get the square root of 2 over 2? 45 degree angles, right? If you turn on your calculator and you sine inverse, the root of 2 divided by 2, you can see that you get 45. Again, sine is positive and it's negative. So we're working in all four quadrants. So that means that we have... 45 degrees, 135, oh, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead here, sorry, sorry. I'll label as 45, 45, 45, and 45. So the, X, uh, the sine is gone, I'm left with x over 2. What are my four angles? 45 is 1. One thirty five got two more three fifteen and two twenty five. So if 
x over 2 is equal to all those, what do I have to do to find my solution? Multiply by 2, I get x is 90. 135 times 2, 270. 225 times 2, 450. 315 times 2, 630. No, I don't like to take points off your test. I like to give you points when possible. It may not seem that way, but we're not going to do number seven, but we are going to do number five, and we're going to do number six. Number five is a hard problem to see at first, but after we see the little trick, it's going to make it super easy, and it's going to be humbling when you see the first step. First, we have to identify what makes this problem unique from all the others. We have sine and cosine. Did we have a problem with sine and cosine on the previous side? We did. So there's something else in addition to the sine and cosine that makes it challenging. In this situation, we got a double angle and a single angle. This is the only problem we've seen so far where that angle type doesn't match. See, one has a 2x and one has an x. Those are incompatible. There's really nothing we can do until we make this either a 2x or we make this equal to a single x. Now, some people love to, you know, they, they, they love to do this, you know. You know, they get sine of x, right? That, that doesn't really work, though, does it? What's going on? <laughs> oh, yeah, good times. Okay. Um, so we got to do something mathematical. I wish that there was something I could substitute for a double angle. It's still humbling because we, like, just tested on this, didn't we? Like, didn't we just, like, remember when Mr. Gens said, find sine of 2x, find cosine of 2x? Do you remember the, the formula you wrote down for sine of 2x? You did it over and over and over again. You remember we wrote down 2 sine of x times cosine of x? Did you, did you kind of, kind of, maybe, a little bit, maybe, no? No? If you didn't remember, I put together a sheet of notes for you. They're all right here, right? So... You know, you can see that on the back there. So um, I can't get you to remember them all. I get it. But I can show you at least where you find them. So that's a formula that we can use. And using these at your disposal, they, they, they are important. So I get you may not remember them, but you got to at least then know to look them up. So we're going to make that substitution. And then the problem is going to become super easy. We've got 2 sine of x times cosine of x minus cosine of x is equal to 0. Now I have both sine and cosine, but they're all single angles instead of any double angles. Anybody want to take a guess at what we do here? No. Take out the cosine. Factor it out. Sweet. We got two equations. Cosine of x is 0, 2 sine of x minus 1 is 0, 0 is awesome, where is cosine 0, we've already done it, 90 in, whoa, look at that, it's like you guys remember, so proud, and then this one, I got sine of x is equal to a half, or oh, you all remember where sine is one half, 30. Where is sine positive? Which quadrants? First and second. So if we have 30 degree angles there, what are we going to get? 30 and 150. Man, you guys are smart. You guys are like all going to Harvard. Some of you are going to Yale, Princeton. Good job. Now you guys are good.
All right, let's do our last one. It looks really harmless, doesn't it? <laughs> I got a sine and a cosine. And so a lot of people are like, well, Mr. Gibbs, just divide by cosine. Okay, go ahead. Don't, don't actually do this, folks. But if you divide by cosine, notice what you get. You're like, yeah, because then we get tangent, Mr. Gens, and that's what you told us to do. And we get a 1. Yeah, but then you get 1 over cosine of secant. And that doesn't really help either, does it? Well, yeah, it doesn't look very pretty. Not to, like, judge. I know beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but, you know, kind of got a problem here. I wish that there was something I could substitute. Like, maybe, like, sine of x is equal to something that has cosine. Like, sine of x is, like, I don't know, like, Cosine of x plus minus square roots, like something. <sighs> there is one formula that relates sine and cosine together. It's only the most important formula in all of trigonometry. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. Yes, it's going to save the day. The only problem is... We don't have a squared. <laughs> so what do you do? Square everything. Square everything. Amen, brother. Let's go. Let's just do it. Let's square it all. So I ran into a Spanish teacher the other day. <laughs> and they said, yeah, they're like, some of your kids, like when they can't do, when they can't do Spanish, they tell me to just math it. <laughs> I, I died. I was like, that's awesome. They're like, where did they get that from? I'm like, why is it? It comes from the conjugate, multiplied by the conjugate when you don't know how to do math, just do Spanish. And she's like, oh, okay. It's like, I don't understand what you're saying. So that's all right. <laughs> she's like, yeah, kids are in my Spanish class. They're telling me to math it when they don't know how to do the Spanish. Like, yes. Okay. So we square and we get sine squared. We're going to be careful here. When we square cosine of x plus 1, we must multiply it out as two binomials. And as we do, we get cosine squared of x plus two cosine of x uh, plus one. And that is my new equation. Though, I have a small problem I'll have to deal with in the end. Notice, what was the degree of the original equation? The original equation had a degree of one. We increased the degree to two. And you guys all know that that adds solutions. So some of our solutions might work, and then some of them might not work when we plug them back in. We'll have to do some checking. But fortunately, we're in a good spot. Now, do you think it's easier to substitute something for sine squared, or do you think it's easier to substitute something for cosine squared and cosine? We're just going to substitute something for sine squared. Cosine squared of x plus 2 cosine of x plus 1 is equal to... And instead of sine squared, anybody know what I'm going to put in its place? 1 minus cosine squared. And now, as I have a second degree equation, I'm going to gather everything onto one side. So I'm going to add the cosine squared over. I get 2 cosine squared of x plus 2 cosine of x. And then notice the ones will cancel, won't they? Equals zero. Now what do you want to do? Take out the two cosine of x. Whoop. And you're left with cosine of x plus one. So... 2 cosine of x is equal to 0, and cosine of x is going to be equal to negative 1. So how do I solve that? Divide by 2. I wish I knew where cosine was equal to 0. 90n. Yeah, we've done that like five times, right? Oh, hey, where do we have an x value equal to negative 1? 180. But maybe we added a solution that doesn't exist. Since we always check our answers, 
We're going to make sure that these work. What is the cosine of 90? Zero. What's the sine of 90? One. Is zero plus one, one? Sweet. This one works. What's the cosine of 270? Zero. What's the sine of 270? Negative one. Is zero plus one negative one? No. So we eliminate the cosine of 180. Negative one. Sine of 180 is negative one plus one zero. Sweet. Look at that. Man, just think of how difficult that would be if you guys weren't very smart. I always end up exactly on a minute. There we go. 